Mike, the swing of emotions this weekend is just almost too hard to wrap your head around after what we saw from LeBron Saturday night. This is LeBron Sunday morning after the Lakers made their way back from their game in Philadelphia. They'll play Tuesday night, but obviously you can see LeBron with the tissue there. You can see him kind of dapping up his eyes, totally understanding the moment and what Kobe had meant to him. I and mean, he said after yesterday's game, passing Kobe on the all-time scoring list. I mean, that's Kobe Bryant. But think about that for a second. That's LeBron James right. being in awe of somebody on a basketball court because that's who LeBron James was and that's who Kobe Bryant was. He did pass him, and Mike, there is a little symbolism here. Kobe adopted Philly as kind of his hometown, right? Played his basketball in suburban Philadelphia. Obviously, Kobe spent his career with the Lakers. LeBron passes him in purple and gold and does so in Philly and then talked about Kobe after the game. I mean, it's just, it's just too much. It's just too much. The story is just too much. It doesn't make sense. Um, and just to make a long story short, now I'm here in the Lakers uniform in Philadelphia, where he's from, where I wanted the first, first time I ever met him, gave me his shoes, he won All-Star Week. It's just, it's surreal. It doesn't make no sense, but the, the universe uh, just puts things in, in your life. And, and, and when you, I guess, when you live in the right way or you just, given everything to whatever you're doing, um, things happen organically and it's not supposed to make sense, but it just happens. I'm happy just to be in a, any conversation with Kobe Bean Bryant, one of the all time greatest basketball players to ever play, one of the all time greatest Lakers. The man got two jerseys hanging up in Staples Center. It's just, it's just crazy. It's cool to know that you have the support of one of the all time greats that ever played this game and uh, someone that you admired um, to be like on the floor um, and, and do the things, win championships, be young, and and and, um, and be remembered. You know, and you don't have that much time to play this game, and you know if you're able to uh, be remembered, um, you know for the, the great things that you did, the positive things that you did, you know making people feel you know great about what you did. Um, that's a pretty cool thing. So uh, I rolled up my shoes tonight. I think I put uh, I think I put Mamba uh, for life. 824 uh, KB because um, it's really it's really that it's really that mutual so you know the word we keep hearing today from so many people who knew Kobe at least have some type of relationship with him Zubin has been surreal yes um, it's surreal for me sitting here doing this having covered him for so long as I did in Los Angeles and you got to feel that for LeBron James right now that moment watching that last night is surreal for him. Little did he know at that time that within 12 hours, Kobe Bryant would be dead. It's an amazing sort of situation to hear somebody like LeBron talk about Kobe that way. One great waxing poetic on the other. The two greats in their own words. I look at Kobe Bryant as the best in our league. LeBron has done so much for the game. He's an incredible player. One of the best scores this game has ever seen. He's one of the best that we've ever seen. He's been so much for what he's been able to do for the league. I'm just trying to put on a show for him and give him a reason to be like, okay, we might come to another game. Kobe Bryant to me is one of my favorite role models. When he first came into the league, you know, he used to call me and bend my ear for advice. Kobe guarding LeBron. James on Bryant. It gets to a point where you be like, you know, I didn't think I could get better today until now you got to guard Kobe Bryant. Hey, hey, what's the rip? What's the rip? When what's I think of LeBron, I think of sheer force you know, as being the initial thrust of his game. He's definitely um, somebody that you could be around all the time. When he and I are around each other, we're always talking, always kind of laughing. He's just trying to dunk on me, Craig. <laughs> oh, no. He's just trying to dunk on me. <laughs> I think it really went to another level when we played on the Olympic team together in the late. Oh, you like my look? Got that Kobe Bryant look going. What's up? <laughs> it's more like a big brother relationship. It, it, it kind of always has been. He looks at me like his younger brother, for sure. And, uh, and that's pretty cool, man. When he first came on board, I said, listen, you are now family now. You're part of this tradition. So if there's anything you need, just let me know. Welcome here with open arms. And just to have that support, you know, from one of the greatest legs I ever play, um, it was just special for me. I once talked to Kobe about maybe becoming a coach in the NBA when he retired from playing. He said, no, there's no way I'm going to do that. The only thing I would ever coach would be my kids. And that's exactly what he was doing with this 13-year-old Gianna, a budding young player there in the Southern California area. They were on their way to a game Sunday morning mm -hmm. for her there at the Mamba Academy. This is some video of him teaching her during a game, coaching her, shaping her idea of what basketball should be. And a couple years ago, 
Kobe Bryant spoke about that relationship. There's so many young, talented players out there. It's uh, it's amazing. And when I took it to the Laker game, that's the first Laker game I've been to, I think, since my Jersey retirement. Really? Mm -hmm. And um, we just had so much fun because for the first time, I was seeing the game through her eyes. Uh, it wasn't me sitting there, you know, as an athlete or a player or something like that. And then, you know, it's, it's like about me and I don't like that. It was her, like she was having such a good time and the players were coming up and saying right. hi to her. And, right. you know, and Brian was talking about her fade away and all, you know, it, it was, it was exciting. And she had such a great time and as a father. I mean, you just, that's all you want. That's yes, all you can ask for. Yes. Yes. So Kobe Bryant in those words, and you saw that Academy Award, that Oscar right behind yeah. him. I, Dan Patrick interviewed him a few years ago, and he actually said, if I walked into your home and I could put a Larry OB out there or your one MVP out there, or I could put your Oscar out there, which one would you want? He said, without even hesitating. The Oscar. The Oscar. Yeah. It was harder for him to attain, and for a guy that had the work ethic of Kobe Bryant, I'm not surprised that was indeed the answer. He but planned to win NBA championships. <laughs> he never planned to win an Oscar. <laughs> but he was talented enough to do anything he wanted. He has died as a helicopter crash at the age of 41, 9.52 a.m. local time. And this is a boat near Miami where they will play the Super Bowl a week from tonight. Either the Chiefs or the 49ers will be champion. Kobe. I know everybody's coming out with their Kobe Bryant story, and that's fine. But um, he is just, uh, he was one of the most special individuals I've ever met. And uh, it wasn't just his on the court performance, it was who he wanted to be, how he held himself. And we're all prone to make mistakes. We all live this life. Um, but his innate character, his, um, his being, his spirit, uh, was incredible. It was just incredible. And uh, it's rare that I've been around a lot of people in my life. And you know, every time I was around him, if that was through the Players' Tribune, if that was through as a player, if that was through random workouts, there's something so damn uplifting about him. It just made you want to be better in every aspect of your life because that's who he was. And that's the standard of excellence that he held himself to all the time. And um, Today's just a really, today's a tough day. Today's a hard day. And I hope that um, everybody at home, you, you give that person next to you, um, whatever thing you have wrong in your life with them, if this might be small or big, let it go. Doesn't matter. I know I curse, I'm sorry. It's okay. None of that stuff matters, man. This is, uh, it's about life and, uh, being precious with every damn second we have here because it, from somebody who knows who almost happened to me like that, man, it's just over. It's done randomly, randomly, arbitrarily. And, uh, you know, his, his four girls and his wife, we, uh, we need to come around them and support them and help them. And the NBA should cancel all games today. Um, I don't really know what else to say. Yeah, we should mention there are eight games in the NBA today. It appears as though at least the Rockets-Nuggets game is going off because they did hold a moment of silence, a moment of prayer, in a sense, before they tipped off this afternoon to eulogize and to remember one of the greatest players that's ever picked up a basketball. I know he impacted your life personally, professionally, way beyond the game. And you can answer this from a basketball perspective or beyond. What separated Kobe Bryant from other people? <laughs> you know, so... My rookie year, I only played one year in the league. And my rookie year, we were playing against the championship Lakers. And it was Kobe, Shaq, that squad. And I remember I was in a slump, wasn't playing well, I was getting sidetracked throughout the season, doing things I shouldn't be doing. And, uh, you know, pumped up about playing this, playing this guy here. And I, I got to the Staples Center early that day, like around 2 o'clock, 2.33 to shoot and get 400 made shots. And, um, you know, I walk in with the ball boy, and I'm putting on my sneakers, and who do I see? I see Kobe Bryant working out so hard, like game-like moves, and watching him like, all right, thank you. No, that's my motivation for the day. That's great. I get a chance to work out when Kobe Bryant's working out. And I go and I do my workout, and I work out for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, and I go back on the sideline, and I unlace my shoes, and I keep hearing the ball bounce. I look down, and this guy's still going. He's still going, and it's still the same type of moves that I saw him going from the moment I walked in the gym. 
And I sat there and watched him for 10 minutes, and then I left. I was like, there's no way this guy is going to be able to have enough energy to play against us tonight. And that night, he just, he just destroyed us. He destroyed us in every facet of the game. And I remember after the whole game was over, I was like, don't be that cheesy dude. Don't ask another man, like another guy, like where that drive comes from. But I couldn't help myself. I, I sought him out, and I, I found him. I said, you know, like, wh why? Why would you stay and keep working out? And I, this line changed.